Hey, I'm back working on the Cafe Racer. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So for all of you that follow this Cafe Racer project, thank you for your patience. I know it has been a while. Um, went up to the quail. I've got visitors now. Um, actually headed out on a five-day vacation with family, and then uh, work has been crazy. But enough on that. I'm out here working on this thing today. Probably be a few days before I can get this uploaded due to the vacation. But um, one of the things that I realized pretty quickly is that this green foam, the florist foam, is so dusty that my painter's tape is not sticking to it too well. And uh, as you will recall, I was putting this uh, piece of vinyl hosing on here to put a little bit of a ridge around the, the upholstery area. And uh, I've opted to get rid of the tape. And what I'm using now is a hot glue gun my daughter's hot glue gun. So, it's working pretty well, but it takes a while for the glue to uh, cool and stick, especially since the florist foam is a bit of a, uh, well, it's an insulator, so it doesn't draw heat out. So I just get a little shot in there and then uh, blow on it. to draw the heat out of it. And then, you know, whatever little <clears throat> imperfections or gaps that remain here, I can always um, use body filler, which is what I will be doing. There, that's hopefully. Now this is definitely doing the trick. It just takes some doing it in pieces, hold that steady and straight, and then I just have to blow on it to draw the heat out of the glue. That's about the most difficult piece is cooling the glue because the foam is such an insulator and the tube doesn't really draw a lot of heat either. But I can see as I blow on it, the glue gets cloudy.
and then it stuck pretty good. So this little spot's going to be tricky because the hose or tubing has a you know a little bit of a spring action to it, and as I bend it to fit these curves, it's putting a lot of stress on that glue. So first thing I've done is let this get very cool, so I've got the best adhesion I can there and uh, just wish me luck um, this won't be easy getting this bend to keep there we go and the foam is flimsy here and I'm going to let this get good and cool before I let go of it because that hose is going to want to pull on that foam and come out of this position and frankly no manner of blowing is going to stop that okay it's a nice sharp bend but yeah, you can see it's trying to spring back so I gotta get on this Okay, I got it all glued in place. Now, what I'm thinking about is the fact that this is going to be fiberglassed over the top. When that fiberglass resin cures, it's going to, well, that resin is going to fill into every little nook and cranny, including around and slightly under this tubing. And I'm going to have a hard time pulling that out of the mold. So, what I really want is to fill that in so that I just have a ridge that's smooth so that I have uh, any chance of pulling this out of the mold cleanly and uh, I keep calling it a mold but I'm, I'm actually just doing this one time so um, it won't be a mold, it'll be the seat. Uh, let me explain myself a little bit. So when you're doing this you've got a couple different choices. You can take your foam, this is a mold, and cover it with fiberglass and then when you pop all of this foam out of it you can then clean, you know, you'll have a shell you can flip that upside down and clean the inside of that shell and get that perfectly smooth you can build it up and reinforce it with additional layers of the um, fiberglass and resin and then when that is absolutely smooth inside you can then over and over use that as a mold to build additional seats, uh, seat pans that are all exactly the same or you can take the approach I'm doing which is the fiberglass that I put on this foam mold will be my seat pan and I'm only building one and so essentially I'm taking the, the mold you make, the fiberglass mold, and I'm just using it as the seat pan. Um, so then, in that case, once I pull this out of the fiberglass shell, or what is now the seat pan, then I can just reinforce that, probably from underneath, so that I don't continue to build up height any more so than this in one thin layer of the glass, and then just smooth the outside of that. Uh, I hope that makes sense, but um, that's the approach I'm going to take. The other approach is to build yourself a permanent fiberglass mold, and you know, if you want to go into business uh, making these GS550 seat pans, and you think somebody's going to want to buy one from you, I guess you could do that. And then just as a bit of a finishing touch here, the glue, when I press the um, tubing down, it kind of smushes out the sides and I'm getting you know not a nice flat layer here so I'm just using the X-Acto knife to just trim the glue a little bit so that once I come over the roundness of the vinyl tubing or the ridge that I've made that I'm you know going to be able to create a, a pretty flat line um, any imperfections here can be sanded out of the final fiberglass piece and that can be smoothed, but uh, you know, just really big globs. I'm just going to attack them with this knife and just trim it. There. 
Okay, wardrobe change on you. Uh, different day, I don't even know how many days it's been since we last filmed here, but uh, back at it. What we've finished off is the ridge around the upholstery with that vinyl tubing and the hot glue has worked quite well, uh, much better than tape. So I've removed all of that tape, which was having a hard time sticking to the you know, very dusty surface here of that florist foam. And so now, you know, I've got the shape pretty close. And of course, ultimately, I want this to release easily from the fiberglass. Um, and so I need it to be smooth. This is such a porous surface that I would have a hard time, I believe. And again, I'm, this is my first seat, you guys. So what little fiberglass work I've done in the past has not been anything like this. It's been more uh, just repair on, um, oh God, I mean, it's decades since I worked with fiberglass. So, um, you know, that caveat is probably a better source for how to make a seat pan than, uh, than here. But I still think that maybe my journey will be interesting and I'm certainly going to learn something along the way. And even if I have a, a failure, which I've had a couple already, uh, failures are learning experiences and valuable. So uh, never be afraid to fail. Um, so we need to make this a little bit smoother so it will release and so that I can kind of, you know, fill in these little bumps and things and just get it as smooth as I can. Although, frankly, the fiberglass that I lay on this, the inside surface, isn't going to matter a whole lot other than I need it clean enough to keep adding more fiberglass resin to it underneath because I want to build up strength from under and let the top be, well, that let that first single layer be the top surface that I ultimately want to smooth out. But I want things smooth. So releasing the fiberglass from the foam is going to depend on having a smooth surface and to smooth this out and make it more workable. I'm going to use body filler. Maybe not the right choice. We're going to find out, but that's what I'm going to put on it. I can sand this. I can work it into nooks and crannies, and, uh, and it should be smooth then for uh, a releasing from my fiberglass pan. So I'll put a little hardener into our Bondo. I don't worry about the mix too much. And we'll get this mixed up. Again, soft uh, putty knife. I say again because I did this in another video, but I suppose many of you are not watching that other video. Get that hardener mixed in, and the clock is ticking here. Time to go spread. Takes quite a bit. But I'll have to mix up more than one. So I'm just spreading it on as thin as I can, but as it uh, as it sets up, and it sets up quickly, it wants to stop spreading and start pulling away in chunks from the foam, and that's when you know you're done. And it comes fast. So, I gotta let it be. Anyways, I can smooth that out now and uh, should be able to get some decent release out of it. I'm just gonna let that cure now so that I can get to a point of sanding it and uh, just make this smooth. See, this area, it started to set up on me and I was peeling it off the foam, so then I had to go back with some extra and now it's chunky and is going to require a great deal of sanding unfortunately but we've got electric sanders for that so that's going to be that this is a nice kind of aggressive while the bondo is still a little soft and i can just go after some of the, the high peaks quickly
it's more fragile than uh, than you think. I'm trying to use a pretty light touch. I was going to use a mechanical sander of some kind, but this is just more aggressive. And it's working great. Besides, it's a delicate piece, and uh, I just want to take my time with it. And I have this on here. This doesn't have to be perfect. But I'm just trying to smooth it uh, so that I can wax it and get a decent release. But this is really bumpy. I've got to sand this down a bit, flatten that out. So it's just taking a little work. Just smoothing out underneath the front lip of the seat where the vinyl tubing is creating that ridge. It's got some globs of the Bondo in there that I just want to smooth them out with a little uh, rotary tool Dremel sanding wheel. And just some finishing touches here. I don't need this to be perfectly smooth and flat. Uh, because, you know, who's going to see that? It's going to be underneath my, my rear end. I'm more concerned with releasing from the mold than I am about you know, perfection here. And even, frankly, up here is the same story. It's also giving my uh, mold some good rigidity, which it desperately needed. It's very fragile. tucks up on the tank nice and now it's it's just smoother and I, I think I'll get some release uh, when I wax this up um, unfortunately that's all I've got time for this weekend and that'll be a wrap for this video this week uh, it's really great to be back at it a bit here um, I know I went to the quail and that meant a big break from this thing uh, and then I've just had some crazy stuff going on in my life and, uh, it, you know, it's all good, but distractions. And, um, but this sure is a nice way to relax and recenter the soul. Um, you know, Zen and the art, right? If you like what I'm doing, uh, click subscribe, click like, thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. I appreciate each and every one of you that comment or engage with this build in any way, and I hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, so how about that? Thanks for watching. <laughs>